guys, we're in uh, Mexico City. Um, I've been here for about two weeks, and um, the beer scene for me is kind of a lot like Paris. It's not super evolved, um, but it is a lot more colorful. Uh, we have uh, on our gondola boat today um, a double IPA from the States. Mm. It's a collaboration from Epic Brewing and Crew Crew here. Um, there's a lot of depth that goes into the label, which we'll talk about. And then from Border Psycho, we have a chili IPA. Uh, I'm started with this though. Uh, Insurgente is one of the big brands around in Mexico. Uh, these are probably my favorite three breweries, that one and La Fauna. Uh, here. I can tell you that if you want to lick it off my hands. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just give you a tour of the city and show you what's good in the beer scene here. So, welcome to Mexico. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to sugarcoat things for you. Um, uh, there's nothing worse than like a rose-tinted uh, critique of something. And I made these videos so that we can connect and be honest and, and open. And um, well, the thing is, <laughs> finding beer in Mexico City uh, is tough. <sighs> I've got three reasons coming up. I don't give them to you. But first, uh, I wanna say that beer geeks are just awesome people um, anywhere. And, and that's continuously fantastic for me. So, muchas gracias to Yam. You're a fantastic guide. Um, thank you for bringing Brewdog beers over uh, from Scotland in cold refrigeration the whole time and for uh, making Border Psycho happen and for smoking cigars with me. Oh my God, I love you. That's my American accent, if you can't tell. Um, and Moro for getting Draconius uh, to clean uh, tap lines before the anniversary. That was great and keep up the good work. And Bastion, um, La Belge is um, it's the best bottle shop in Mexico City. And bringing over those really well done and well executed styles is a really good inspiration for the beer scene in Mexico. Um, Carlos from the Trappist and the Beer Brothers and uh, tasting room. Uh, I just really appreciate it. Uh, all of that being said, uh, point number one, the beer in Mexico City is expensive. Now, it's about the same price as what you would get anywhere else for a, a beer, a good craft beer, like that normal price range. Um, but the thing is, is that other things are so uh, inexpensive in comparison. So look at it this way, like, uh, a torta, like a, a Mexican sandwich, which is like just one torta is all you really need, like that's dinner, is about 25 pesos or uh, a euro 37. Um, so a takeaway beer is about 60 to 100 pesos. That's like 330 to 550 in euros. Uh, <laughs> and um, a, a pint at an establishment will set you back anywhere from 75 to uh, 130. That's like four euros to seven euros. Uh, and they're usually kind of smaller pints as well. On the higher end of that is the brew dog, which is, you know, uh, came a long distance, but it is cold refrigerated. And uh, well, I mean, at least it's consistent, you know what you're getting. So there's that. Um, so the point here is, as always, imports are clearly gonna be more expensive uh, than local beer. Um, the thing with local beer is that quality is, uh, questionable to say the least. It's double disappointing when when you pay a heap of money in comparison to other consumables and then uh, what you get is infected beer or it's substandard or it's just otherwise um, embarrassing you know and it's, it's not good for newcomers that are coming into the craft to, to understand that they're paying more for something that's inconsistent and not exactly that great. So uh, along that same line um, <laughs> You know me, I uh, quality is super important, but um, I'm also s very forgiving. Um, if um, if I have a server or a bar person who has that twinkle in their eye, you know, um, has that passion and that interest, like, oh, I've got this 
whatever special bitter on you have to try it or um, these guys make this beer and it's right down the street and it's made with blue corn Whoa, crazy things um, Mm, yeah, I'm that kind of a person like I'll spend the extra cash and and I'll be ready to accept some of the issues That come along with this, you know growing industry um, because I want to support it But um, honestly the service that I got in most of the places in Mexico City was a mega letdown um, It's like somewhere between the neglectful French style and the shallow um, American kindness. Uh, you also are uh, generally expected to tip about 10%. Um, so I know you might think that like language barrier was a big part of that, but um, to be honest, I've been in places like Italy where I don't speak the language and we've been able to mime out or use the internet to untapped or Google to communicate what we're looking for. And I also did have translators with me and people who were speaking Spanish. God bless Marty, she was there speaking Spanish the whole time. Um, I think in general, the beer geeks are all on the same page. We want something fresh and balanced or exotic and complex. Um, but here, it's still a lot of compromise. Yeah. More than once, um, I've uh, <sighs> been served something from a keg and had that thing where they're like, oh, that's just the way the beer is. Uh, even though I know it's not, or whatever, um, I have to s send it back or I just end up not finishing it and still paying that price, um, mostly because uh, I feel like the servers don't care or they're resistant or um, we've been absolutely ignored at some of the places we went to as well, which was just a big letdown. In that, uh, the third thing, last bit, is that um, Mexico City itself is an adolescent market. Uh, I'm reassured that in Tijuana it's more advanced in beer years, um, mostly in my opinion because it's geographically closer to like San Diego, um, but other people say that it's because they can get fresher ingredients, the breweries there. Whatever um, the reason, it, it does just, it blows my mind. Mexico City is a capital and, and it's huge. Uh, it has a population of like 21 or 22 million people in the greater Mexico City um, region, area, which is like second only to New York City uh, is in the size of metropolitan cities on the west coast, um, on western hemisphere. So, huge. Um, and it's b basically when you go into beer bars, they are just, they're empty, they're like missing people. Um, they're un uninteresting, kind of uninspired. They just look like um, a like shell of a hipster with high price tags as well. Um, so it'd probably be kind of difficult to become a regular at some of these places. Um, in conclusion, I had some really good stuff. These breweries that I mentioned, um, and I went to some great places throughout Mexico City. I think that they're they're ripe for guidance and they're moving in a great direction and there are some really awesome people who are in there. Just, you know, um... Wait, wait, okay. Just last bit before everything starts to break. Wait, there are really great things. They're just kind of hard to find yet still, but that's why people like me exist. Hi, hello. I'm on a quest to live deliciously and you're coming with me. Uh, I'm putting up on the blog places that I went that I found. Uh, also open to suggestions. I'm gonna put on there as well some cigar places that I went to because I'm also into that. Um, thank you. Thank you for checking out my channel. Tasty Niche is about um, um, having good taste in all things. So I'm looking forward to uh, expanding what it is that I cover here. Uh, in case you are wondering, yes, I'm still beer. Uh, you can check that out um, on my uh, morning beer conversation. We can talk about it, you know. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned for developments on my Patreon page. Uh, more content is coming that way. And, um... And I've also got some shirts coming in. What? You're gonna love it. I promise. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Adios, amigos.